welcome to the course uh, on the um, molecules in motion. Uh, in the last class, we had talked about the kinetic energy theory in terms of the distribution, speed distribution, Maxwell's and Boltzmann's speed distribution. What we are going to do today is going to uh, re revisit what we have done in the last class and also to see uh, some certain things like the average uh, speed or the RMS speed or the most probable speed which we had just mentioned in the last class, how they can be derived because this syllabus or the course which you are taking just mentioning the um, uh, expressions for the speed uh, of the various forms, the RMS, the most probable or the um, average is not sufficient. You need to know how to derive it. It is mathematically a little bit difficult, but it is based on once you understand that it is based on the uh, standard integrals, then you can use the handbooks and the tables which are provided and then it does not become that difficult once you know how to proceed with it. So, today we are going to do that. So, let us uh, see what we had done in the last class and in this if you see the Maxwell's distribution which we had talked about, I want you to understand what actually uh, uh, this means because we have talked about in one dimension uh, the distribution of the particles in speed and velocity, we have also discussed in the three dimension form. So, uh, at times what happens you have confusion as to what we are meaning uh, for the various terms we are using because certain books will use this as the, uh, the distribution function or you will say the probability density they will call it and some uh, books will call this as a fraction of molecules with a particular range in velocity. So, uh, let us first revisit and see what are the things which we are going to have and we will we'll try to uh, see and uh, visit the same topic again. So, that if there is any confusion we clarify that. So, what, what we have talked about, we have talked about the Maxwell's Boltzmann distribution mm -hmm. to determine how many molecules are moving between a certain range of velocity. What is that range? We have said it is uh, if I talk about a velocity in a particular x range uh, x direction or y direction, then the velocity we are talking essentially of the velo velocity space. Okay? It is not the uh, radial space or the space which we x, y, z represents. Here x, y, z whenever we are representing we are talking about the velocity component in the three direction x, y and z. So, what we are dealing with is actually a velo velocity space. Okay. So, uh, what we are looking here the, when we are talking about Maxwell's distribution of a particle of a molecule, it we can talk about in terms of velocity, but actually what we deal with is actually the speed of the molecule. So, in one dimension what we mean that we, we have restricted the movement of particle or not looking into the movement of particle in x, uh, y direction and z direction, we are looking into the particles moving only in the x direction which is supposed to be independent of the uh, velocities which is there in the means the velocities of these particles in the y and z axis do not have any effect on the, uh, the distribution of the speed of the particles in the direction x which we are looking into. So, what we have? We have n number of total particles. Okay? Now, if we have total n number of particles, what we are trying to find out? See, the expressions are very complicated, but you have to understand what is the uh, uh, basis of these expressions. So, uh, when we are looking into the number of molecules, the total number of molecules being n, whenever we are dealing with, we are trying to find out the total number of molecules we are dealing with is total, a total is n. Now, what we are trying to find out? How many molecules are going to have uh, a speed in the range? this and this okay v plus v plus delta v okay and when we are talking about a movement in the x direction we subscript it by x like we have written x here okay this is how we designate it so what we are looking into we are trying to find out how many molecules uh, that means we are talking about a fraction of the total molecules which is moving in a particular direction x 
having the velocity in the range v x plus v x plus delta v x. Okay? So, if we are looking into that, this is how we can write if a total function, total number of particles uh, or molecules are n, then what is the fraction? Fraction is the total, this is the total number of molecules in the fraction having the velocity uh, in the total number of molecules having the velocity ranging between v x and v x plus delta v x. So, we can if I take the ratio of this that means the total molecules uh, having the velocity in this range divided by the total number of molecules present in the system or a container then this is going to give you a fraction. This fraction is the same when we uh, some books will represent this as the f x v x d, d v x. This is the distribution function this is the distribution function this gives us the uh, uh, the probability of finding a molecule within the range of velocity v plus v and v plus dv x okay when we are talking about movement in the x direction now what are these components you see the, you have when you are seeing this expression it looks very complicated but one when you are looking in this comp, uh, expression you see this is some some part and then you have e to the power something and this is the interval into in which we are looking into the into the uh, of, of the function distribution function in that means this interval is the uh, in, uh, velocity interval we are looking into what is that vx and vx plus delta vx okay and when see, since this is a probability distribution that means the total probability is always going to be 1 so we need to do a normalization normalization uh, gives you uh, the term which is the constant. This is the constant term which we derive through normalization. So, the expression has two parts if you see look very see in, into the expression then you see it is having two parts. This one is or what is obtained from the normalization and this one is the exponential part which is the ex, uh, expression for the um, uh, distribution function. So, normalization what we do we, we, we say that the function the gas molecules are moving from minus infinity to plus infinity means in the x direction. So, when we normalize we put the um, f of v x into d v x should be equal to 1 when integrated <coughs> between infinity to minus infinity. That means, if I am talking about x minus x to infinity in the minus uh, in the x direction uh, in the uh, uh, for the mi minus infinity expression. Now, additionally we have written that uh, when we were looking into the three dimension of the th uh, movement of the particles what we have the functions can be written in terms of the scalar quantity of speed v instead of we are writing vector quantity we always define in terms of the uh, scalar quantity that is the speed the magnitude of it of the velocity part. So, in this what we divide define the probability distribution of the uh, of speed of the gas molecules between suppose we have uh, the velocity v and v plus dv. Now, what we are looking when whenever we are looking at a uh, term v and not uh, signifying uh, um, 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 indicating whether it is x y or z that means, what we are looking is the probability that a molecule has a speed in the range this is evaluated the total is the uh, probability which you are looking into on a surface of a sphere with the radius being that of the uh, v this v what we are looking into we have derived in other classes previous classes is this is the RMS speed we always put into. So, what we are looking is we are evaluating the total probability that the molecules will have a speed anywhere on the surface of a sphere this is going to be the surface of the sphere and what will be the uh, prob total probability anywhere on the surface of the sphere with having the radius this is the radius this is the RMS velocity uh, in we talk in terms of speed because we are talking in terms of the magnitude only. So, this is the RMS speed uh, which we are looking in where the RMS speed is given by something like this it is the square of the means of the velocity under root of the square of the root uh, means of uh, uh, velocities of e each x y z direction 
by summing the probabilities that is in the volume element. See this is the volume element we are looking into. We can uh, specify a volume element somewhere here having very small cube x d v x d v y d v z and these v uh, these this is a velo velocity space I has, as I have already told. So, this volume element when I integrate or uh, sum it over then I get a shell sort of a thing covering uh, uh, continuously uh, uh, on the surface. So, what we are talking about is essentially a uh, shell thickness and from that what we have got we got this term. This is the surface which we are looking into. So, this is what we are, we got from the term. Uh, this is not going to be there when we are talking about a one dimension movement. So, what we have added here instead of the in addition to the addition uh, normalization term the exponential term we have added this term when we are talking about the uh, movement of particles or sp um, speeding of particles in the three dimension. So, I hope you have we have done this previously I hope we have understood uh, what the significance is. We, here we are talking about uh, fi finding the total probability on a surface of a sphere of radius r uh, radius v this v is the RMS velocity. And this surface is obtained by summing the probabilities of say small cubes which is there on this surface. If I keep uh, uh, summing up all the cubes the probability in each of the cube each of the cube has a dimension of this because x y z directions are there. So, velocity in x y z direction in a very minute infinite small cube if I sum it over all the cubes which is going to be there on the surface then I get a shell. And this shell is the surface area of this shell is what is multiplied to find out the total probability of the finding of the molecules in the range of this v plus v plus delta v. Understood how did this come in? We have talked about in the last class, but this is what comes in and it is the additional term when we are talking about in the three dimension. So, what we have here? So, what we this is the distribution function please remember this is the distribution function whenever um, this is the function which we are having and we have if when we want to find out the probability distribution then we multiply the fu distribution function with the dv the interval ok the velocity interval we will multiply this is the function which you are getting for the uh, the distribution function, but when you want to find out the probability uh, the distribution or probability of uh, probability distribution of the particles in a particular range then you multiply this by dv. Suppose the distribution function is derived for all gases of uh, containing n molecules then the expression becomes n the total number of molecule present into the function this is the distribution function. Uh, and into the interval. So, this gives you the distribution of uh, the total molecules present uh, the uh, probability of probability distribution or probability density of n number of molecules in the system. So, now if we want to find out what is the fraction of molecules which fraction also gives you the uh, equivalent uh, information to finding out what is the probability of finding a particular uh, uh, um, uh, section of molecules having a particular range of velocity. So, here is what we have written in the just now before we have just discussed what is this going to be this is going to be the uh, number of, of uh, molecules which is going to have the velocity in the range v plus v plus delta v. See some books they write v as the RMS speed v as the uh, radius of the surface we are looking into some books will say it is c. So, whenever we are writing c or v RMS or v please try to remember at various sections I have written different forms, but c as long as we are writing c it is the RMS speed we are talking about. We, if we are writing V and we are writing V RMS, these both are going to mean the RMS speed. So, here what we are finding out the total number of fraction of the molecules, what will be the total fraction? It, the total fraction will be the same as the F x uh, in uh, d v uh, F, F v d v this is going to be the function which we are going to have. And divided by n that gives you the fra fraction 
and that gives you the probability of finding a molecule at a particular range of velocity. Okay? So, that you can represent the probability density can be represented in terms of this. What we are looking into? We are looking into the function uh, distribution function in the range v plus delta v. This is the v plus delta v and minus the one which is at, at v. So, what we are finding out is the dividing by the total width of the velocity gives you the probability which is going to be there in this section in this area. Okay? In the last class, I could not show you the um, uh, uh, diagram for the molecular distribution, how it depends on the molar mass. If you see the, uh, uh, I have got a few slides on that now to in this today's lecture. The, how the molecular mass, if you are, this is the molecule which is having higher mass, this is intermediate and low. You see how the distribution function is looking at. You, we have to remember the total distribution, total area covered under the uh, gra graph will always be equal because we are talking about a total same set of molecules under same conditions. So, the total area under the curves will be uh, obviously higher. Now, depending on the distribution function, if you re remember the distribution function, what you can see the molecular mass have, uh, when you have a low molar mass, you see the low molar mass, what you have, you have a broad uh, spread of the speed distribution. So, uh, and a significant fraction will be found traveling faster than the RMS speed. This points which is written, drawn, this is give, going to be the um, expression, uh, the position for the RMS speed. So, if at RMS speed is a reference which we are looking into, then we can see that if you have a lower molecular mass, the, the distribution is going to be um, broader. This is number of molecules in the y axis, it can be the probability distribution density or it is going to be the number of a fraction of molecules in a particular speed range. These can also be written in the y axis. This axis always remains as speed. So, if I indicate the dotted lines at this RMS speed, if you look at it, the broad speed has uh, a significant a significant fraction of may be found in traveling at much faster than the uh, RMS speed. So, as we go uh, towards uh, this is going to be go uh, going to a higher speed. So, what we have a significant fraction may be found traveling much faster than the RMS speed. This is the RMS speed and you see significant fraction is going to be found higher in the range. Now, the distribution is narrow. If I the distribution is narrow, for that is for the heavier molecules, then the most of the molecules will travel with the speed close to the RMS. This is the RMS, this is not, it is not the peak, it is just out below the peak. Okay? This is the means this is slightly higher than what is the uh, specified value for the speed. So, this is the RMS speed and uh, uh, from this we can find out the, the narrower the, uh, distribution for um, heavier molecule most of them will travel with the speed course close to the RMS value. So, now we, if you have a uh, distribution function which we can look into the average or uh, uh, values which we uh, probability density or probability distribution or fraction of molecules in a particular range. If we look into this, uh, the heavier molecules will move slowly than the lighter molecules. So, heavier molecules with, will have a smaller speed distribution and the lighter molecules will have a speed distribution which is very uh, spread, widely spread. So, if you see the molecular weights of these um, gases, you can see this is the gas which is helium which is much more uh, spread out. This is lighter molecule compared to that one which is highest in molecular weight will be xenon. So, this is going to be a narrower. So, it is uh, as we go in increase in molecular weight, the distribution is going to be more widespread. Okay? We had talked about the uh, Maxwell distribution in terms of the kinetic energy. See, when we are talking about the distribution in terms of the velocity, since velocity uh, um, half mv square uh, is equal to the kinetic energy, so we can always represent the distribution function, function uh, in terms of the kinetic energy. We had represented that, but uh, it, this class also I am going to show you uh, what is going to be the distribution of the energy. 
so when I, when I write speed distribution I write f of v and then dv here we were going to write f of e epsilon de which is this is going to be the probability distribution of the energy and here what we are looking into we are going to be looking into the probability of finding a molecule having a energy ranging between uh, epsilon and epsilon plus um, d epsilon ok. So, this is what we are look, going to look into when we are looking into the calculation. So, the kinetic energy is given by this half m v square and the average speed if you want to find out the, uh, uh, the speed here from this um, expression then what you get this is the expression multiplied this divided by m to the power half the differential of this equation because we have we have a differential in the expression for the distribution so what what will be the dv be now you differentiate this respect with respect to de so this is going to be the expression de by 2 me to the power half is what we are going to get okay by differentiating this so that will be equivalent to the dv so now when we want to find out the a function for the probability distribution in uh, of energy what we write we write the same terms which we have for the velocity instead what we have here we have derived the normalization term this is uh, for the uh, probability distribution taken to be 1 we just dis describe the uh, deduce the um, constant term and then we get the expression i would like you to do this as an assignment uh, the probability of finding a molecules in the translation is independent of its mass this you can do once you understand what is going to be the uh, uh, the uh, translation energy uh, average translation energy the average translation energy will be the distribution of the energy into the uh, energy for a particular molecule if you do, do that and integrate between 0 to infinity use the standard integral you should get 3 by 2 kt. I would like you to draw do this yourself and you see we have discussed this in the previous class how the uh, shape of the uh, distribution curve for energy is going to be much steeper here than that of the um, molecular distribution of speed. So, this is how we have we, we have the distribution function in terms of the energy. Now, what we are I am going to look into is we have in the last class we have talked about the most probable speed we have talked the rms speed we have talked about the uh, um, uh, the average speed but we have not actually found out in the expression i want you to do this the most probable speed for finding out the most probable speed the maximum value can this value is the maximum value of the distribution curve corresponding to this so, if we want to find out the maxima of a certain thing then what you have you uh, take the differentiation and put it equal to 0 is the point where you have the um, uh, value uh, estimated for the maxim maximum point in a curve ok. I hope you know that when you are doing a differential calculus to find out a maxima in a particular point uh, for, for a, a particular plot the point which is uh, having the maxima will have a differential value equal to 0 ok. So, the, this is established by uh, this is going to be used to find out the most probable speed because most probable speed is the place where you have the, uh, the peak of the distribution curve. So, this, this is the distribution and which if we differentiate with respect to the um, uh, uh, dv then that should be equated to 0 and if I equate to equate that to 0 if this is my the probability distribution curve I differentiate with respect to dv and then equate it to 0. So, this is what I get you just have a look at how what we have done I have differentiated this with respect to dv. So, which is the term which is going to be there. So, th this is this will not be affected this remains as it is. So, what is going to be affected this v term and e to the power term is also going to be affected. So, what we get the first differentiation we are going to get is 8 pi v ok uh, from this expression and then you have 4 pi v square uh, this is coming from this expression ok. So, if I now get if I have this entire expression equal to 0 
this is constant this is does not get changed because uh, these, these are does not have the variable. So, it, you can keep this uh, equate this to 0. So, eventually what you get is uh, 4 8 pi v equal to this one okay. and from here you see you can get the value in terms of the r t by m or k b t by small m. I hope you have understood how to do it. You just have to differentiate the distribution function with respect to d v, the, uh, the velocity, uh, uh, the in, uh, what do you call say, the interval and then you equate that to 0 and whatever velocity expression you get from here will be the most probable speed. Okay. So, similarly, if you want to find out the mean or the average speed. The average mean speed is the sum of the speeds of all molecules divided by the total number of molecules. Okay? So, the sum of all molecules is uh, divided by the total number or in alternately we see we can say the mean speed is cal can be calculated by multiplying each speed term by the fraction of molecules that have that particular speed. So, and then adding all these products together we should get the uh, uh, mean speed. So, what we are going to multiply? Multiply each of the speed, uh, speed term with the fraction of the molecules in that particular speed and then add up all the products. Okay. So, the, if the speed of the molecules is uh, v, the velocity of the molecules uh, in the range is going to be vf, vf uh, dv, the product of this will be this one. right? So, I product of this and now I, how I sum it up? I sum it up means if I um, keep summing then I can actually the discrete can be uh, put to in a continual, continuous integral. So, I can uh, integrate it from 0 to infinity to get the total uh, uh, products uh, multiplication of total products. So, this is how I am going to get. So, this is the function which we I have. So, I put it here just have a look what we have done we have just taken this we have differentiate this d v function we put d from from the function is itself and then we have put v because the velocity at each uh, multiplied by the fraction of the molecules in that and then summing up for all particular uh, molecules. So, I integrate instead of summing up I have integrated. Now, have a look at the expression which we get this is the expression we have. Now, all these terms are uh, constants, so we can take it out. We are left with this expression. Now, when this is a standard integral, the standard integral is he, something like this. Now, compare it with this, the standard integral I am giving from the handbook. So, the standard integral if, if you compare with this and this, here n becomes equal to 3. If n becomes equal to 3, then the product of this expression becomes 1 by 2 2 a square and what is the a square which we have defined? The a square will be m by 2 pi a a r t. Okay. From here we are comparing this entire thing to be a uh, minus a square uh, a, a x square. So, if I take x as v then m by 2 r t will become the a. So, if I put it there you see the integral value becomes here. Now, I put uh, it is just a simplification what I put I find out the total uh, the value of c or the v the average mean value by multiplying this into whatever fraction which we have derived from this. If you multiply this you will get a expression something like this. If you are until you do it yourself it is difficult to understand it is just a simplification step. Similarly, when we want to find out root mean square, what do we do? Root mean square means root uh, square of the average uh, square uh, of the average speeds, with each of the speed which we have to take. So, uh, we have to take the square of it. So, the uh, uh, C or the RMS speed, both of them are same. The molecules can be evaluated by integrating or we say the sum of all the events or we can say integration using the solution of a standard integral. So, here what we have? Here we have the square root of square of averages. So, average speed which we have uh, if we denote v then we have square of that 
and under root of that. So, this is the function which we are going to get. I hope you are understanding. So, this is the function we are going to get that will be raised to the power half okay, according to the expression. And what is the function? Function is already known to you. So, if uh, or the function already has a 3 uh, v term. So, if you have another v square term here, then you have v to the power 4 and the whole thing is raised to the power half because that is the definition of RMS speed which we have. It is the square root of the square of average speeds. Now, we can compute this by comparing this with the standard integral something like this a is the constant terms other than the v 1 v term is going to be the expression equivalent to x. So, we what we have it is x, x square and the other a term will be m y 2 pi r t uh, 2 r t and then what is the n here n is 4 right. If you have n is 4 then you compare that with the standard integral the expression is something like this I have done it for you but it is just a simplification that you put in ok. So, we have does, uh, uh, discussed this previously all these expressions which you have each of this uh, probability distribution is proportional to m by uh, t by m half to the power half uh, that means increase in temperature and decrease with uh, it decreases with the molar mass. So, the lighter molecules move faster than the heavier molecules. This is what we had discussed in the last class we had only talked about how it is you have to look into the thing that the value of the speed the RMS speed is going to be the highest the mean is going to be somewhere in between the most probable and the uh, RMS and the mean uh, uh, the uh, most probable is always going to be representation of the peak that means this most probable means this is the fraction of the molecules uh, maximum fraction of the molecules are having this particular speed not the highest speed maximum probable fraction of the uh, molecules are having this particular speed is known as the most probable. So, uh, we can verify this uh, with the distribution function by using uh, ve velocity see we have done the Maxwell's distribution now we need to know whether the, um, the distribution um, uh, which, which whichever we have derived is going to be followed. So, for that we need to do some experiments and this experiment is done by a device using a device called the velocity selector. It, what is it? It is a series of spinning wheels with a hole through which the gas can pass or refuse. This ensures that only a gas particular, particular particle with a, a particular uh, appropriate speed will pass through all the holes as the spins uh, the uh, wheels are also moving the wheels are moving the wheel has a uh, speed of their own the, there are holes in the uh, uh, wheels. So, if the particular uh, molecule is passing then they have to have a appropriate speed to pass through the hole. The number of molecules uh, for uh, um, the various uh, velocities can be determining by collecting the samples in the detector and we can and verify that the molecules are produced in the source uh, from here only if this uh, molecules in such a uh, is such that it carries uh, along with the channel uh, through passing through the hole which is uh, uh, put uh, on mounted on the wheel which is also having a speed is going to pass through. The number of slow moving mo uh, molecules can be uh, calculated by rotating the cylinder slowly and the number of fast moving can be uh, found out by increasing the speed of the wheels which we are looking into. So, this gives you the if you see the detector you can find out the uh, number of particles which you are having a particular speed if you collect it over a sample then you will see that they are following the distribution law which we have already discussed. Now, we can uh, extend the distribution law to a certain concept which is everyday uh, experience for us. Suppose we are talking about about evaporation. What is evaporation? And do you, uh, if you have noticed, the evaporation is always a cooling process. What happens? Some molecules are in the li liquid, are which is highly energetic. They are on the surface. They leave. They are having sufficient energy to overcome the intermolecular forces which is existing within the within the liquid. So as soon as these molecules which are of higher energy, higher speed higher energy is associated with higher temperature. 
So, whenever the molecules which is having higher energy uh, it, it tends to escape from the surface, what happens? The molecules, the fraction of molecules with high energy is now gradually leaving the surface. So, higher energy associated is essentially meaning that the system is going to have higher temperature. So, if the higher energy molecules are escaping because they are having sufficient energy to overcome the intermolecular forces that is existing in the liquid, then the fraction of the higher uh, high energy molecules is reduced. So, the fraction of molecules having higher temperature is reduced. So, evaporation should be a cooling process. Okay. Thank you. We will discuss the next class.